Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Wednesday, 21st February, 2024, and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group, the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union registers strong post-COVID rebound. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. The Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, ECCU, has undergone a strong rebound, led by tourism and investment, and supported by policies that helped moderate the impact from successive external shocks. These are among conclusions from the Monetary Council meeting in St. Kitts last week. More in this SKN Newsline report. The Monetary Council of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank held its 107th annual meeting on Friday, 16 February 2024. The Monetary Council received the Governor's Report on Monetary Credit and Financial Conditions in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, ECCU, for the period January to December 2023. The report honed in on the major risks to financial stability within the ECCU and the steps required to double the GDP within the currency union. What will it take to double GDP in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union? And the Governor's Report indicated that the post-COVID global economy, uh, which saw better than expected 2023, has shown resilience and is forecast, and that resilience is forecast to continue into 2024. The meeting took place at the ECCB campus in St. Kitts and Nevis under the chairmanship of Camilo Gonzalez, Minister for Finance of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Even before the meeting, the Monetary Council held wide-ranging discussions with representatives of the International Monetary Fund. These discussions also included possible collaborations between financial institutions on a host of issues ranging from climate change to supply chain and shipping challenges. The International Monetary Fund forecast in its January 2024 World Economic Outlook update that global GDP is likely to grow by 3.1% in 2024, which is an unchanged growth rate from the previous year. Other downside risks include geopolitical and inflationary pressures, consumer and food prices eased in 2023, and are forecast to continue doing so in 2024. The Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, Terence M. Drew, spoke of the financial rebound from the COVID-19 pandemic. We recognize that during covid A lot of persons would have lost their jobs, who would have had difficulties in really, you know, gaining um, an employment that they who would have had loans would have been, you know, have difficulties paying and they would fall in that category. Since we have seen some recovery of the economy, for example, in St. Kitts and Nevis, and as the chairman would have said, we have seen that across the region. I think that there's opportunity really to have the lowering of the loans. The council agreed to the convening of the 108th meeting of the Monetary Council on Friday, 26th July, 2024 in Anguilla, immediately following the handing over ceremony to mark the change in chairmanship of the Monetary Council. The Honorable Dr. Ellis L. Webster, Anguilla's Premier and Minister for Finance, is due to assume chairmanship of the council. For the DBS Newsworld, Manasseh Stanislaus reporting. Guyana's president, Dr. Irfan Ali, has promised that his country's development of the energy sector will benefit the region. Dr. Ali, along with Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley of Trinidad and Tobago, officially opened the Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo in Georgetown on Monday. TTT's Sunil Lala reports. The development in Guyana, especially in the energy sector, 
must and will benefit the region. A bold statement from Guyana's President, Dr. Irfan Ali, on Monday as he officially opened the Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo. He said Guyana's booming oil and gas industry will directly benefit the people of Guyana through revenue creation, increased foreign direct investment and local content development, but noted that regional neighbours will also benefit significantly. I ask all the gas value chain participants today and in the future to work closely together with a common objective of developing Guyana's gas now to ensure the maximum value from our gas resources, ensuring the future development of Guyana and prosperity of all Guyanese and the region as a whole. In his address, Prime Minister Dr. Kidrawli said the region is no stranger to challenges, having to import an estimated 87% of oil compared to the global average of 21%. This, he noted, leaves the region vulnerable to energy market volatility, and he advanced the need for collaborative efforts in the region to effectively utilize its resources. To this end, we have executed unitization agreements with the government of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, the government of Barbados, and the government of Grenada, which will allow for the exploration of hydrocarbon resources in the maritime boundaries shared with these neighboring countries. Dr. Rawley said TNT is also open to engagements with its regional neighbors to lend a hand in their energy pursuits. As a country with more than 100 years in the oil and gas business, we are open to collaborating with our regional neighbors in the development of the region's hydrocarbon resources through the sharing of our knowledge, expertise, and infrastructure in commercial activity. Dr. Orley noted TNT has action on MOU with Guyana through the formation of a high-level bilateral commission, as well as an MOU with Suriname in July 2023, for cooperation in the energy sector. On day two, Minister of Energy and Energy Industries, Stuart Young, is accorded to give his presentation at the Guyana Energy Conference. Sonlala, TTT News, Georgetown, Guyana. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Cocaine with a street value of over half a million dollars washed ashore on Sunday at Cove State, Tobago, near where the overturned vessel is lodged. TTT News has more. According to the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, reports indicate that at around 2.40 p.m. on Sunday, a black plastic bag containing a white substance resembling cocaine was found along the shoreline. The drug weighs approximately 1.109 kilograms and has an estimated street value of TT $515,285.76. Senior Superintendent Rod Hillkirk said on Monday that police have no evidence to confirm that the find is linked to the oil spill, though the package was found in the vicinity. Officers of the Tobago Divisional Task Force and Special Intelligence Unit are investigating. Meanwhile, investigations continue to identify the owners of the vessel, which continues to leak a fuel-like substance contaminating Tobago's waters. A media campaign has been launched to win back tourists to the Bahamas. More in this ZNS News item. We have meticulously crafted a marketing strategy aimed at mitigating the impact on our tourism product and our national image. Our goals are to deepen market penetration, promote a reassuring narrative, and amplify the Bahamas' brand to a wider audience. We plan to continue to saturate social media with authentic, positive stories. We've already begun an international media blitz And I have appeared on several international travel media programs, as well as several executives of the Ministry of Tourism. In the meantime, the Chief Superintendent, Chrislyn Skippings, speaks on police crime-fighting initiatives in the Bahamas as authorities pull out all the stops to protect the country's main industry, 
tourism. Now, with the recent spate of homicides and violent crimes that's gripped the country over the last few weeks, police officials reiterating its commitment to the crime fight. Police press liaison officer, Chief Superintendent Chrislyn Skippings. The family is the basic unit of society. And if families can't get it right, then we're going to have some challenges as to what we, we've seen. As an organization, though, we remain firm. We remain relentless. We will continue to work with all stakeholders, providing information and providing assistance wherever possible. But we simply just ask the Bahamian people to continue to partner with your Royal Bahamas Police Force, the number one policing department in the Caribbean. Skipping's urging Bahamians to partner with the police to tackle crime. This after the Davis administration has pledged additional resources to assist in crime fighting initiatives, which includes more manpower and resources. We have an aggressive approach. We have a number of operations that are ongoing, and those operations are going to continue. And again, I want to encourage members of the public. You see our officers from the traffic division as well, always out in full force. That will also continue as well. So all of the minor offenses, we are aggressively targeting, and we're going to put persons before the courts for those minor infractions. Once those minor infractions are controlled by members of the public or they adhere to the minor frac- infractions, I I can just show you we will definitely see a reduction in our major crimes. More questions and answers coming out from the Joint Select Committee's examination of the cyber attack which impacted TSTT on October 9th. In fact, it was revealed that what may have been the root cause of the cyber attack was not reported to the CEO. As Akash Samaru of CNC3 News explains, questions arose at Monday's sitting on whether or not there is a sinister plan to undermine the operations of TSTT. I did not mislead the minister. And the former TSTT CEO is sticking to that. It's not the first time Lisa Agard explicitly stated that she did not provide Minister Marvin Gonzalez with inaccurate information, which he then read on the parliament floor. But it is her first appearance before a joint select committee of parliament to defend herself on the matter. And Agard, who reminded them that she had 22 years of experience in the media, and telecommunications industries said what Minister Gonzalez read and what she sent to him were not the same. In the statement prepared for the Honorable Minister to respond to the question in Parliament, there was absolutely no mention of the SD's data and the data of its customers, not in any way being. Egard explained that she would have texted information to Gonzalez to use in Parliament but he instead read from another letter which was sent to their enterprise customers. Agard claimed she was then barred from TSTT's executive from clarifying the minister's statement via a release to the public. But much more was unearthed today, including what may have been the root cause of the cyber attack. Forget the October 9th event, which we know about, she said something took place on October 3rd, where an employee system was significantly compromised, an occurrence she said she knew nothing about until a month later. Why was the CEO not told about this breach that occurred on the 3rd of October. Why did all the communications to the CEO about the breach indicate that it occurred on the 9th of October? This prompted Senator Wade Mark to ask if there is the belief that there is a sinister attempt to undermine TSTT, with Ms. Agard and former CFO Shiva Ramnarayan being casualties. Yes, it was at every front. At the board level. Ram Narayan said as chief financial officer, he made cost-saving decisions that were not popular by internal stakeholders. Where else in the world, I wouldn't even use Sri Lanka Tobago, in the world, does a CFO and CEO walk up to the board and say, hey, listen, we need to cut costs. We need to optimize wastage. And it is met without favor. It is met with discord. Questions were sent to Public Utilities Minister Marvin Gonzalez, who said he will comment more when the results of the investigation he ordered into the matter is completed. Minister Gonzalez expects to get that information in March. Akash Samaru, CNC3 News.
I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's our service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. (laughs) 